Oh, crap. Okay. What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. I was just talking all this time and wasn't saying nothing, but that's okay. With that being said, because uh, y'all couldn't hear me, I appreciate everybody coming through. Here's the thing. YouTube has rendered me useless as far as live streaming there. So I need you guys to all come over here to Twitch, to Mixer, chop it up with your boy there, all right? Because um, until we get this straightened out, I am not able again to live stream to YouTube or to Mixer, and I want y'all to have a good time. I mean, I, I'm not able to uh, uh, stream to YouTube. What's up, Cali Rex? What's up, homie? But if y'all could do me a huge favor, tweet this out. Tweet this out, please, so everybody is aware. We're going to cover some things um, in regards to E3. Man, woo! That Nintendo Direct, hot fire. <laughs> Nintendo spit hot fire. Hey, bruh, crazy. We're going to talk about that and some other things in relation to E3. But before I get too deep into that, I need y'all to also keep in mind, please stay locked, ready, and loaded to go to Next Gen 720's channel very soon. Um, he has a special treat for y'all. If everything is, is panning out the way that it's supposed to. So be ready at the drop of... Even if his start and mine's ain't finished, y'all need to go there. I probably ain't got to tell y'all that. But I'm just saying, because then uh, I'm going over too. I'm, I might have to cut my stream short. But I'm not going to take too much time here. We're just going to chop it up a little bit. We're going to talk about this E3. We're going to have a good time, man. Uh, but again, big ups to Cali Rex in the chat. And again, if y'all could tweet this out, let everybody know that your boy is officially live and di live and direct on the scene. I'm gonna try to share this out myself um, to everybody. Let me see. Send this out on Twitter. Okay, tweet this out. <gasps> tweet this out. We did tweet it out. Okay, so then now I'm going to go to my Twitter page real quick view my profile oh man we got a lot of we got a lot of stuff okay um I'm gonna get this out to everybody I'm gonna get this out to everybody so if y'all can anybody that's listening whether you're listening live whether you're catching this on demand let your boy know what did you think so far about the conference. About the Nintendo Direct Conference, man. Woo! Hot Jiminy Crickets. Hot Jiminy Crickets. Okay. So I see here now that while I'm trying to tweet this out. I'm going to tell y'all this, man. As a... Uh, as a Xbox consumer. And I'll just put it like this. As an Xbox consumer, not a Windows, not a Windows consumer. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Windows gaming. I'll get into that a little bit later. I'll talk about that. You know what I'm saying? On Scram Punks today, just briefly. We're not gonna we're gonna use these channels and these use these these streams to go over uh uh everything as far as my feelings about what the future holds in regards to uh, Microsoft's or AKA Windows gaming streams. I'm not going to get into the whole kit and caboodle on your boy's channel. Uh, I'm not going to do that to him and his subscribers. <laughs> My homie Dirk Griggity, you know what I'm saying? He's been such a gracious host to take over, pretty much take, he done took over. He now owns Scram Punks. I, I, we joke with him all the time. This is yours, Bubba. You know what I mean? So I don't want to do that on his channel, okay? But with that being said, um, I almost didn't watch Nintendo. And I always tell you guys that I like to have well-rounded discussions. I love it when you guys are in the chat. I love it when you guys are chopping it up here and doing all that fun stuff. You know what I'm saying? We have a good time. Um, it's important that people understand that 
I don't say, it's just not a slogan for me. What's up, child of God? What's up, bro? I appreciate you coming through. It's not just a slogan for me. I wholeheartedly mean it. Because what ends up happening is by me chopping it up with you guys, I learn about mistakes that I'm making. You know what I'm saying? Now, again, I don't believe that I'm just messing up all over the place because if I felt like that I didn't know what the hell I was talking about or I was messing up all over the place, that they, what the hell would y'all be coming to me for? I would just be wasting y'all damn time. But no, there are times when your boy MM2K ain't looking at things at the full perspective as he needs to and y'all get y'all help me out. Now, what am I talking about? You guys in totality have been telling me, stop sleeping on Nintendo. I mean, yeah, they, they, they might be on some kitty shit, but Nintendo's on a whole nother stratosphere, man. Like, they're really better than Xbox. And I laughed it off. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, yeah, your boy do. I laughed it off like, come on, man. I get where they're getting curb stomped by Sony, but this whole, come on. These four, four, four forty p graphics and all this other stuff. Please do not feed me that garbage. That Nintendo was better than Microsoft. Microsoft is out of touch with touch with with, with getting it with its core. But we definitely do not want Microsoft to be all kiddish and kitty like some goddamn Nintendo with a couple of spark sessions every blue moon. I do not. Want to compare my console or my, e right. my ecosystem of choice? And big ups to Graphic God for hosting the screen. I appreciate you. You know, I don't want my system of choice to be compared to SeaWorld or Disneyland, whatever you want to call Nintendo, right? That was my theory. Because, and why did I live off that motif? I lived off that motif because... Nintendo has a stigma of not having any hardcore games. Big up to Child of God for hosting the stream as well. I appreciate you. Right? That is the motif. And Child of God, believe you me, I'm not going to do it now. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. But believe you me, what we was talking about, it's going to come to fruition this week. I'm already working something out. Me and you will talk off offline. But a big shout out to Child of God. Um, because we 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 working on we work we working on educating the masses here. There's something big coming. But that's neither here nor there because I don't have a whole lot of time right now. Like I said before, Z do his thing with an 89 swing. All right. So I was running off that motif again that hey. If Nintendo were to over-influence the market, we would have nothing but kitty games all over the place. So I don't want Microsoft. I don't want my console, my system of choice, trying to be like Disney World. The hell, I'm a grown-ass hairy chested man. What did Charlie Murphy say? Err, wrong. Err, wrong. Let me explain something to you. Last night, I saw, well, it, it brought me back to this Chris Rock joke where he said, a white rapper is the greatest rapper of all time. A black man is the best golfer. And a Chinese guy is the tallest man damn well on the basketball court. And we got a, a president named Bush and a vice president named Dick. He said, what the hell is happening to this, to this world? The world is about to end, right? He said that jokingly. Like, what's up is down. I want to let y'all know last, that last night, I watched it on demand. I watched the, I watched the most hardcore Gaming show out of the big, or showing out of the big three, and I get it. You guys are probably saying to yourself, MMTK, what the hell are you talking about? Sony wasn't there, but follow your boy, follow your boy. I saw the most hardcore showing out of the big three come directly from Nintendo. 
Now, granted, Sony wasn't there to defend itself, but everybody was talking about that Square Enix conference, and they was like, hey, Square Enix knocked it out of the park, you know, Sony won. No, come stop. Square Enix had almost 18, they had 18 plus titles, not almost, they had over 18 titles, and the vast majority of them were dated RPGs. Now, with that said, even though they weren't there, that the offerings of Square Enix and in, 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 in the gaming stratosphere at E3 in totality <laughs> provide more fanfare and big ups to, oh man, I missed that. Uh, Bang House, thank you for following the channel. I appreciate it. Um, the day in totality uh, uh, have a better representation for their core than Microsoft did while they were there. The Almighty, thank you for following the channel. I appreciate it. And the answer to that is yes. Even though um, Sony wasn't there, they had better representation for their core via vendor services, via Square Enix. No doubt about that whatsoever. The core had more to be excited about as far as content is concerned than the core of Microsoft did. No, no, no doubt about it. But that's not saying a lot. That's comparing, like I always like to say, excuse my friends, that's like comparing the cup of piss to the shit sandwich. And we need to stop that. Okay. I get it. We got our favorite piece of plastic. We got our favorite ecosystems. But MM2K has got to come right down the middle. Square Enix, again, showed you 18 plus games. The vast majority of them were dated RPGs. Now, with that being said, on the flip side, you know another company that showed you RPGs? A whole bunch of them? Nintendo. And I'm here to tell you that Nintendo shit didn't look dated. <laughs> Nintendo won that goddamn E3 hands down. Oh my God. And again, nothing against Sony. I don't like that Sony didn't show up, but I'm just talking about performance. You can't even, it's not fair on either side to give Sony the win or give them an L. They weren't there as far as presentation was concerned. They had no control over how those games were presented. They can't take the, they can't, they don't get the award by association. They don't get the W if the other people presented it well. They also are not responsible if it was presented poorly, they wouldn't get the L. So this is not a knock on Sony. I am saying though, that as far as fanfare, Sony's people got a lot more fanfare at that E3 than the core Microsoft brass did, formerly known as the Xbox Gamer. <laughs> no doubt about that. Okay, so let's get that off the table. But what I'm telling you is this is not a knock against E3. I mean, this is not a knock against Sony because, again, Sony didn't control that message. It's, a, it's not a knock against anybody. Nintendo did the damn thing. They showed you the RPGs. They did a sizzle reel of the dated stuff. And they showed you the hardcore stuff. And they showed you more hardcore than Microsoft. And Microsoft was created on the basis of hardcore. Utterly amazing. I find it utterly amazing that that happened. Let's talk about what they what, what they gave. Let's talk about what they showed. But I want to give a shout out to the chat first. Thank y'all for following me here. We got Cali Rex. The Almighty, he said, Square Enix won. He's the MM2K, shut the hell, shut your ass up. Square Enix won. <laughs> and again, big out to Bang House, Child of God, 
and everybody else that is following your boy. Um, thank you for coming over. And we're going to do, like I said, I may do another stream today. I may do it directly before or after Scram Punks. So stay tuned. Scram Punks will be on Griggity's channel. Um, we were, I was contemplating switching it up, you know, bringing some other people on and doing some other things, but Dirk Griggity got something um, special lined up for you. We got a special guest coming more. We'll be on that. You'll definitely not want to miss that when we air that later today. And again, like I said, directly after this podcast, Next Gen 720, yeah, he got a goodie for y'all. <laughs> he got a goodie for y'all. Okay. Now, let's get into it. So what did Nintendo Direct show? Okay. They had Smash Brothers DLC. They had Dragon Quest XI. Which, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm reading this off to you because during these E3 shows, your boy takes elaborate notes. Okay. I list the game. I list what popped out. I list the pros and the cons, and I give it like a simplistic rating. Okay. Now, when it came to Square Enix's, constantly on my sheet was meh, 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 meh. And again, I, I love RPGs. Okay. It's just that because I love RPGs, that don't mean that I don't want them to grow and mature, you know, and get better. There's a difference between. A 2000 RPG, and it was uh, should be a 2019 RPG. What I saw a lot on Square Enix's stage was a lot of 2000 and before RPGs. Okay, I don't live when when I go to a showcase. I don't want to live off of nostalgia. It's okay if nostalgia's there, you know. So it's, it's, it's a cool chaser, but the hard liquor is the innovation. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I saw. A lot of innovation in the Nintendo Direct. Again, we, we, you know, Smash, we, look, they had Smash Brothers DLC multiple. They showed it twice. And the second time was killer, but we'll get into that. Dragon Quest XI was okay. Luigi's Mansion 3. Not really my type of key. Uh, God damn, I can't even talk. I'm, I, I'm so amazed. Not really my cup of tea. But damn, that was solid. The gameplay innovation and stuff that they showed, solid. I tried Luigi's Mansion years ago. What was it on GameCube where, where it debuted on GameCube? I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I just couldn't do it, man. But again, solid. It's all about reaching your base and attracting more people. The Sark Crystal Strategy game, that was good. That looked good. Zelda's Link's Awakening. Again, may not be my type cup of tea, but solid. Now, Trials of Mana, meh. Witcher Complete, even though it's laughable, as far as fidelity is concerned, to the bigger two, you don't get a switch for the fidelity, right? You don't. That's not what you get a switch for. You get a switch for its portability. And for those of you that hate game streaming so much, that like the, the dedicated device, that's why the Switch is so popular. You can you can get the you can get the best of both worlds. You can still have your dedicated device along with portability. So the Witcher coming to the Switch is solid. That's a big thing. Then you had Fire Emblem. It was an impressive cinematic trailer, but no gameplay. So you know, and I and I'm a fan of Fire Emblem. Resident Evil. Didn't look the greatest, but a solid pickup. Good fit on the, on the system. That Contra game, solid. It looked better than a goofy Bambi. You know what I'm saying? The 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 the, the uh, hungry Bambi simulator that was on Nintendo was better than that that whole lineup of games that they showed that the Smack did in the middle of their presentation. Uh, the, the Damien Machina mech game, solid. I'm not a big mech game person, but that was solid. Now, Panzer Dragon, the Dragoon, nah. But Astral Chain, that looked good. That looked good. Now, I would, big ups to Baron. <laughs> you just, hey, the way that, I, I checked out his live stream a little bit in between me going back and forth through my stuff. And, the way that mug was hollering through that Nintendo Direct, you thought he got hit with a 38, baby. <laughs> ah, ah, 
You would have thought that 38 was bouncing all around his body, man. But big ups to him. He, he had a reason to. And especially when he saw Astral Chain. He's been telling us about Astral Chain. I'm like, what the hell is that? I don't know what the hell that is. And I was ignoring it. But then you had Astral Chain that was shown. And Astral Chain looked very good. Very linear. I'm not big on linear games right now. I'm beyond that 2019. But with that being said, and again, it don't have to be open world, open world, but you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of claustrophobic as a gamer, like move, get out the way. You know what I'm saying? So I, but, but that's, that, that, that was beyond solid was good. Very good. Empire of sin, that indie top down shooter. Eh, okay. Marvel ultimate Alliance. Now I would have said that was very good, but the only reason why I say it was very good is because the whole Ultimate Alliance series is based off the X-Men Legends series. Okay, X-Men Legends was the same, like, top-down, whatever, four-person brawler, or whatever you want to call it, game. Um, they did an X-Men Legends 1 and 2, and big ups to uh, D-Sport and God 876 for following. I appreciate it. Um, Again, retweet this out if y'all can, please. I would really appreciate it because all my live streams are coming from here. So retweet this out. Thank you very much. And I can't do this without y'all's support of this dog shit channel. So thank y'all again, man. I really I really do appreciate for those of y'all that did come over. Thank you. Um, like I said, uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance was a show or was it was a game series that was generated from... Um, what do you call it? It was generated from uh, 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 um, X-Men Legends. X-Men Legends 1 and 2 were fantastic games. I love those games. They were fantastic. Okay. With that said, the original multiple, Ultimate Alliance games is when they became popular. And I didn't like them. Even though they looked better, the fidelity was better. It was just something about the gameplay that kind of got slowed down and kind of got messed up. They weren't, the, the 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 level design and a bunch of stuff just wasn't as, as genius and as fun as it was before. And playing as different characters wasn't fun. Hopefully that's fixed in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. But with that being said, what they shown you, what they shown you was good. Was very good. Uh, then there was that Caton's Hyrule Zelda game, man, and Mario versus Sonic, man. Animal Crossing, I'm not the biggest person on that, but Animal Crossing is a big game. It's okay, what they showed. It was okay. And then a sizzle reel of Switch games? Oh, crap. They showed a sizzle reel of Switch games? And, oh, come on. The sizzle reel of Switch games that they showed. Looked 20 times better. And it, the sizzle reel was like indie games. The sizzle reel of indie games looked 20 times better than... Microsoft's whole 15, 20 minutes, whatever they spent on their, their crappy looking shit with the black Peter Pan and all that silly shit, right? Then you had, <laughs> then you had what you thought was the, was, was, was the King Caper. You thought it was the King Caper. You had Banjo-Kazooie. Banjo-Kazooie shown in Super Smash Brothers. D Spartan God said, I'm back on Mixer just for y'all. Hey, D, you could do, hey, look, man, I'm just going to keep it jiggy, man. I don't know if I'm going to end up partnering with Twitch or Mixer. There has to be an alternative to YouTube because YouTube done lost his ever loving mind. Here's what I believe happened. But then me and my homie, uh, 
child of God, we was rapping. We got our own theories, right? <laughs> but here's what I think happened. I did a live reveal of Ubisoft for my dog shit, you know, viewer counts. It did okay. Ubisoft inadvertently hit a whole bunch of people with copyright strikes for showing that because they had a live orchestra playing at the beginning. Oh, excuse me. For those of you that don't do YouTube, that aren't familiar with it, you know, they have, they have what they feel are very um, detail-oriented and very extravagant systems that can tell when certain audio belongs to something else. And then certain video that has been copyrighted through YouTube, they'll detect that too. I guess because of stuff that was shown there, Ubisoft wouldn't copyrighted some things. But I don't they didn't do it with the intent of smacking gamers or smacking content creators because as quick as those copyright notifications came to me. And I didn't notice them until a couple hours later. I went to check the video behind the scenes and Ubisoft removed them. It just required me to remove some audio. And that audio was just the orchestra plans and some, you know how games have certain music. If you've ever streamed to YouTube, you've probably had to deal with the, with the inconvenience of getting a copyright strike because, you know, there's a certain song that's playing while you're in game on, on the quote unquote radio, right? And it's copyrighted. And your intentions isn't to, to play copyrighted music. You're just in the game and the stupid radio's on. So if you've ever streamed and you've had that inconvenience that you had to deal with, well, that's what your boy got hit with. Your boy got hit with a bunch of those and they got removed instantaneously. So that stream was like two days ago. So I go to stream yesterday, not realizing because it's happened. That's happened to me before to where they said, you don't have a strike. It's just, you can't get monetization off of this. And look for full transparency. I'm not getting paid for none of this shit. I'm not, I do this for fun. I would like the channel and for everything connected to the channel to grow, you know? Um, but I do this because I love chopping it up with you guys. And, I, and, and, and with that said, you know, if we grow, we grow, you know? But even at that, right? Um, YouTube still has me restricted. So because they still have me restricted, we're going to have to take our talents elsewhere, as the great LeBron James said years ago. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you look, 22 years plus years in Fortune 500 world. This is not how you do business. You know. This is not how you establish business either. I get it. There are millions upon millions, if not tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions, people streaming to YouTube every day. Um, and I get it. You got an algorithm that has to account for every, all that content constantly being uploaded to YouTube. Nonetheless, um, I'm looking at the, the stuff that the algorithm does, how it doesn't rescan, right? How there's not a rescan feature? Like this, I've I've built SQL servers and stuff like that, and I get that it would be a long reach, but you're getting a lot of money for this. So if you if, if, if you see a copyright claim on some material, and it's not necessarily a strike, but it's a copyright claim, and you want to restrict future live streaming because you don't want it to build up and build up and build up, that is fine. I, I understand that. But you need to do 12 out, 6 to 12 hour scans. 
At the very least. I mean, that's still a long time. Some people say, no, make it every four. But again, I get the, the capabilities, the systems, the wide reach of what, how YouTube would have to do this and the complications with that. You do six to 12 hour scans of that material that you have altered, whose channels you've altered, and you see if the problem is fixed. I ain't got to email you. You ain't got to email me back. But they hide themselves between so many walls you can't even communicate. So, again, I don't even play those games. I will, I, I, partnering with them, shit, it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't looking good. So, to answer your question, D, what you may want to do, bro, is uh, just follow me on Twitch. Again, I don't know if I'm, I'll partner on Mixer. I'll, I'll put as much material as I can out there, but follow me on Twitch if you don't feel like following me on Mixer. You got all three. You know, I, I simulcast all three. Okay. So with that being said, okay, so I went through everything, right? And the last part of the broadcast of E3, the uh, Nintendo Direct at E3, the last crazy part was they just did a cinematic trailer of Breath of the Wild 2. It's in development. That's all they did. And I bet you all the Nintendo stands were having orgasms all over the world. <laughs> Golly. I mean, that's the show. We got them to give us their character and put it in our game. And was arguably, in a lot of people's minds, the game of the generation that led to come back in Nintendo on the scene, baby. Breath of the Wild. I'm pretty sure it has more copies sold out there. I believe so. So you, it, it got room to argue, baby. Breath of the Wild is 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 uh in development. We just showed you a trailer. Now the trailer was all right. Now Microsoft couldn't do that with Fable. Something's in development. I'll get into that later, but that's why I say Nintendo won E3. They definitely won E3 over Microsoft because. They took the hardcore crown from them. Them games that they showed. No More Heroes 3. I forgot about that. That was hardcore. They had the hardcore show. Nintendo? What? They had the hardcore show. That's... That's disgusting. <laughs> it's not disgusting for Nintendo. That's for Microsoft. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. So they definitely be them. Them doing better than Microsoft ain't even up for question. Now let's go to some of the other two that I was more favorable towards. That I also said was better than Square Enix's. Even though I believe Square Enix was def was definitely better than Mike. But again, that's that's comparing a shit sandwich to a cup of piss. Okay, Microsoft's conference ain't even up. Them and EA need to go sit in a corner somewhere, okay? Disgusting. Disgusting and pathetic. But if you if you put all the, the, the conferences in one pot to your boys, and again, this is all preliminary, as I was telling y'all yesterday, not for sure, but if, I, I, if you put all the conferences in a pot, the juiciest or the tastiest spice in the pot, from bottom to top. I'm thinking right now Square Enix is at the bottom. Barely above that is um, Bethesda. And you, you know I'm a Bethesda fanboy. But I got to keep it coming down the middle. I love Fallout 76. I think it's a very fun game. And then they're, they're, they're fixing it. And again, like every other... Todd Howard game, y'all gonna hate it at first and then love it later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And this they showed testament of that. The 52 player battle royale. I've seen uh demos of that online and shit looks real. I mean, go check it out. You know, solid. And all of it's free. But just but beyond that, you know, 
they shown some okay things. And they showed more gameplay than Square Enix and Ubisoft. But the thing is, is that they really didn't show you anything new. They showed you Doom, but who? I'm, I'm not a Doom person. And I don't think Doom's... Doom has gotten critical acclaim, but it's not like... It, it doesn't have widespread reach, you know. It, it has very... I don't want to say niche, but it, it's not... It's definitely one of those games where you could put not for everybody. Even in the shooter round, not for everybody, right? Uh, thank you, Maroon Wind, for following the channel. Um, now, uh, with that being said, uh, so then, so there will be Square Enix and slightly above that will be Bethesda. They're kind of running neck and neck, but I give a slight edge to Bethesda because they show gameplay. Right. Then there's, uh, oh. Then there's, uh, 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 um, um, then I would say Ubisoft and then I would have to put Nintendo up there. And that's because Ubisoft showed some good stuff, even though they showed less gameplay. And then that Uplay Plus announcement was just, along with State, it was just a, a stellar and Nintendo's Direct was, was fantastic. Now we had the PC gaming show. <laughs> That was dog shit. But there's always one diamond in the rough in the PC gaming show. Like uh, there was this, there's this VR game called Stormlands that's being developed by Insomniac. And that was my runner up in the game of the show last year. And my, and, and one of my uh, 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 contestants, I want to say, for possibly for game of the show is a game called Remnant from the ashes. Holy shit. <laughs> that flew under the radar. So check that out. It's like a post-apocalyptic game. You know, you got some polishes made by the same people that, that did, that are behind the defiance in, in some shape, form, arc that's behind that. But um, it looks solid. It looks solid. And we're going to see the progression. I have some questions about the gaming AI, but I think they set them on easy just for gameplay purposes, but we'll see. But that has a lot of potential in it, you know, so check that game out. But besides that, the PC gaming show was horrific, and I thought the funniest part was Epic Games, not um, Epic Games sponsoring the show. And every time they were mentioned, <laughs> there was like silence or very hesitant clapping, you know what I mean? So again, like I tell you, I don't, Look at the console stands as far as how Epic Game is being viewed. Go to where they're at. It don't matter what voters in England think about laws in the United States. You got to go to the people in the United States. So if you're worried about Epic Games' popularity, who cares what console people think? They don't boot up PCs. You need to go to the PC crowd. And they got big problems there. And they've got a long way to go to fix it. But that remnant from the ashes is a big thing. All right, like I promised y'all, Next Gen 720 is working on something. I am ending this stream right now, okay? Right now. I appreciate all of y'all for following. Please tweet this out, but I wanted to keep y'all up to date. I got some other, I got some um, notable mentions that I'm a video that I'm either gonna drop today or tomorrow. And then we're just going to round up E3 and then talk a little bit more about Microsoft in this direction and some other things, okay? And don't forget, y'all, Scram Punks is tonight. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Morrowind, D Spartan Gods, 876. You know what I'm saying? Um, who else here? The Almighty, same person, though. Uh, Child of God, appreciate you. And Cali Rex. And if I miss anybody, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm blind all of a sudden. Thank y'all for coming out. But that's it. Um, Nintendo killed it. Right now, as, I, as I'm thinking about it, they got the crown. Um, they show RPGs. Oh, and I forgot the one game that's also a candidate for game of the show. Oh, man. If I can find it, where the hell is it at? I can't find it. I can't find it. What the hell? Aninaka. Man, now that's what I'm talking about. 
Aninaka is an RPG, action RPG. But it doesn't look dated like the vast majority of the stuff shown in Square Enix. You see what I'm saying? My favorite game is an RPG of all time is an RPG. Final Fan, I mean Fantasy Star 2. So Nintendo was able to hit the same market that Square Enix was hitting, but not show dated stuff and show more thrilling gameplay. They 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 won. They won. They won and satisfying the crowd. They won. Just because you won doesn't mean that everyone else are losers. They lost, but they're not losers. If you like what Square Enix show, fine. But I'm just saying for overall appeal, it goes to Nintendo. And I, and that's a damn shame being that Microsoft, all eyes were on them. They knew that. They had the biggest stick coming into E3 and Sony didn't even show up. That's a goddamn shame. So with that being said, all right, go to Next Gen 720's channel. He is getting it live and direct. All right, so stay tuned for that. And with that said, follow pntsnetwork.com. Go to our E3 2019 page or tab. Go to our E3 TV. We're going to have articles coming up soon too. Got different contributors. And there's some Reddit news coming too, but I, I'll get into that later. With that being said, I want to say big out, big ups to everybody. Shout out to everyone that, that came through. Please let everybody know that we're going to be here for live streams. I'm going to download this and add it to YouTube later. But with that being said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace. Enjoy E3.